In this lesson, I'm going to talk about reproduction, development, and cell division. Okay, all three ideas and concepts in the living environment are very closely related. There's two types of reproduction. Okay, there's asexual reproduction, and the key to this here is genetic, genetically identical offspring to the parent. Okay, so we're going to have one parent, two offspring, and it can be single or multicellular, and essentially it's cloning. All right. So in asexual reproduction, what you'll have, typically this is a cell, let's say, the cell will grow, and then the cell will split into two identical forms with the same DNA. Okay, essentially it's cloning, it's asexual. A, the prefix means without sexual reproduction, okay, without two different uh, sex organs coming together, all right? In sexual reproduction, this allows for genetic variation in offspring, okay? Because the daughter cells get half of the genetic information from each parent, all right? You'll get half from the father's sperm, in the case of a human, and one half from the mother's egg, again, in the case of the human, all right? Um, there's two parents and one offspring, all right? And this typically occurs in complex multicellular organisms. And it's going to involve the process of meiosis or the division of sex cells, all right? So asexual reproduction is essentially cloning. Essentially, it's mitosis, which we'll learn about later. Sexual reproduction involves meiosis. So what you'll get here is you'll get a sperm with one half the DNA that you need, an egg with one half the DNA that you need. They're going to come together and make a fertilized egg with all the DNA that you'll need, okay? So genetic variation happens because you have genes from both parents coming together to essentially make a new set of genes, okay? Genetically identical, genetic variation. So mitosis, I mentioned this in the previous slide. In mitosis, again, this is essentially cloning because the daughter cells are identical to the parent cell, all right? The cells must grow before they divide because if you were to divide before growing, the cells would then be small, okay? The daughter cells have the same DNA as the parent, and a function or functions of mitosis uh, big into cell division, growth, development, repair. When you cut, when you have a cut on your skin, for instance, the cut doesn't stay there forever. The cells around that cut will divide and fill in that space. Okay. Also during development, when the embryo develops into a fetus, into a full um, functioning human that can then be released from the mother's uh, uterus, a lot of mitosis will go on during those developmental months. Okay. And everywhere but sex cells, mitosis occurs. So everywhere but the sperm and the egg, you'll see mitosis. Skin cells, muscle cells, brain cells, liver cells. Everywhere but sex cells, okay? So we have the parent cell, DNA replication, and the cell growing. And then two daughter cells with identical DNA to the parent. Meiosis is the division of sex cells, okay? Sperm and eggs, all right? The cells will only get half of the DNA and chromosomes as the parent because they undergo an additional round of cell division, okay? So up until this point, it's the same as mitosis, but there's another round of cell division here in which the two cells becomes four. So we go from full DNA, doubled, same amount of DNA as the parent, and then we do another division, so each of these Daughter cells will only get half of the DNA as the parent. All right, so we have a full amount of DNA that we double it before we divide. Then we have the same amount of DNA that we divide again and only get half of it. All right. So this is a source of genetic variation because, let's say, in sexual reproduction, you're only going to pick one of these cells to come down and recombine. All right. There's an extra round of cell division, as I mentioned, and the function is division and production of sex cells, the sperm and the egg cells, okay? This only happens in the ovaries of females and the testes of males, okay? So when you think meiosis, you should be thinking about the division of sex cells, the production of sperm and eggs. Now, cancer is uncontrolled cell division, okay? There is a problem in the genetic code of those cells and for some reason, the cell cycle, that cell division cannot be shut off, okay? It's uncontrollable. It's caused by two things, either genetic mutations, okay, you might be born with a predisposition to having cancer, or exposure to chemicals or radiation, okay? These mutagenic agents that cause mutations and 
in essence, switch on an uncontrolled um, portion of cell division. So what you're seeing right now is a skin cell, all right? And this is normal skin right here. This is normal. And what you see up here is a mass of cells, okay? A bunch of cells that uncontrollably divide. And this is a tumor, all right? And if these cancer cells, these uncontrollable cancer cells, make their way to the bloodstream, which is down here, that means these cancer cells will travel to other parts of your body. Okay? And that's when cancer really gets dangerous. Because as we know, structure affects function. If we have structures with random tumors, they're going to lose their structure and lose their function. And that's going to result in a disruption in the homeostasis and potentially be very dangerous and deadly. So three reproductive hormones you should know about are testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone. Testosterone, you should see the word testes in there, okay, so you should be thinking of the male sex cells, men. The function of testosterone is to develop sex cells, okay, and sex characteristics, okay? So sperm, development of sperm, development of uh, broader muscles, a deeper voice, an Adam's apple, facial hair. Estrogen is involved in the development of female sex cells, ovaries, okay, um, and female sex characteristic, widening of the hips, breasts, okay, a menstrual cycle. And progesterone is primarily involved in the menstrual cycle, okay, and pregnancy. So a few structures you should know in the female reproductive system are the ovaries, oviduct, uterus, umbilical cord, and placenta is a big one for the reasons, all right? Your ovaries, or females, produce and release eggs, all right, the sex cells of women. Also produces estrogen, which regulates these sex cells and your sex characteristics, all right? The oviduct can also be called the fallopian tubes. And this is where fertilization occurs. Fertilization is when the sperm meets the egg to develop a full fertilized egg. And we'll talk more about that later. The uterus is where the fertilized egg develops, okay? It implants in the wall, all right? Common confusion. The fertilized egg does not develop in the vagina. It develops in the uterus, okay? The umbilical cord is the fetus is linked to the mother, all right? And the placenta, this is a big one, is a source of nutrition, oxygen, and waste exchange for the child, okay? It connects the mother to the child by the umbilical cord, all right? So what you might have is a baby in the uterus, all right? It'll have an umbilical cord, and this is the placenta, all right? And this is where the gas exchange occurs, all right? This is where the baby gets all of its nutrients, all of its oxygen, gets rid of all of its waste, because it cannot do it yet on its own. So here's a frontal view of the female reproductive system. Vagina's down here, uterus is up here. So when a fertilized egg, again, fertilization happens here in the fallopian tubes, the sperm will come up through the vagina, meet the egg about halfway, the egg comes down from the ovaries. And once fertilization occurs, the egg will kind of stumble down and then implant inside the wall of the uterus where the development will occur. Okay? A side view you might see on the Regents exam, all right? This is the anal canal here. This is the vagina, the uterus. These are the fallopian tubes and the ovaries. Okay? So you should get used to seeing it from both sides. This is the bladder. Okay? I'll go ahead and label them for you. This is the vagina. That's the uterus. These are the ovaries. Excuse me. These are the fallopian tubes. And the ovaries are on top of the fallopian tubes, okay? So get used, I might spend or pause the video and take a look at these two um, images side by side just to give yourself an idea of what each reproductive organ looks like, all right? So if I were a fertilized egg, I'd be implanting right there on the uterus. Male reproductive system. The testes produces sperm and testosterone. We've talked about this. The vas deferens are connections from the testes to the urethra. Okay? This is how the sperm will come from the testicles and be released into the external environment via the urethra. And the urethra brings semen and urine to the external environment through the penis. All right? And allows for internal fertilization in a female. Okay, so when the penis is inserted into the vagina and the sperm is deposited into the vagina, it's then able to swim up to the fallopian tubes to meet the sperm halfway. Okay, so the urethra of the penis allows this to happen. 
The menstrual cycle is a monthly cycle of females that prepares the woman for pregnancy, okay? So it gets the body ready, it gets the lining ready. So again, I'm gonna do a quick picture of a uterus with a fallopian tube, all right? And what happens as the menstrual cycle progresses, the walls of the uterus will build up, okay? And it's getting ready for this egg to come down. Now, if there's no sperm, the egg continues down, unfertilized, does not plant, and comes right out the vagina. Instead of using this extra um, lining in the uterus, the woman will bleed and get her period, okay? Because she's not using that uterus lining, uterine lining. Um, and again, the egg does not implant in the wall, so the lining will shed. That unneeded lining will shed and drop out of the vagina. So as I mentioned before, fertilization is the union of the sex cells, the sperm and the egg, okay? Meeting in the fallopian tubes to form a zygote or a fertilized egg, right? The fertilized egg will then travel down the fallopian tubes and implant into the uterine lining, all right? So again, I mentioned fertilization happens in the fallopian tubes, all right? Think of the sperm and the egg meeting halfway. As the egg comes down from the ovary and the sperm comes up from the vagina, they're going to meet halfway and then the fertilized egg will travel down and implant in the wall of the uterus where it will continue to develop for nine months until it is ready to be born. Differentiation and development. So again, I mentioned that development is the development of a fetus or embryo within the uterine wall over a period of nine months. And differentiation is a very important concept that goes hand in hand, okay? So differentiation is thought of as embryonic stem cells becoming specialized, all right? So if you think about it, we all start as one fertilized egg. And from that fertilized egg, we develop into a plethora or a ton of different structures, all right? So in theory, this egg, this one cell has the potential to become anything, all right? And even the cells around it. Okay, so stem cells are cells that really have the potential to become a whole bunch of different structures. All right, so differentiation is the process of these stem cells right after fertilization becoming specialized, having a particular function. This one cell um, making more cells that become skin cells and hair cells and muscle cells. All right, so again, I said the first single cell, the fertilized egg, because so, becomes so many different cells with so many different functions, okay? Differentiation is the process of unspecialized cells becoming specialized. Uh, cells without functions having functions. So again, over nine months, the fetus will develop within the uterine lining and creating specialized structures, okay? So what starts off as one single cell will develop into a fetus with skin and nails and bones, okay? The zygote develops by mitosis to form the specialized cells and eventually the tissues, organs, and systems that make up uh, the multicellular organism, all right? So the zygote after the sperm and egg uh, meet in the fallopian tubes will develop by mitosis, okay? Mitosis will create all of those extra cells, all right? Other than sex cells, remember, meiosis, make sex cells, mitosis is the chief process that helps the zygote develop. So just some prenatal care, a mother's exposure to some environmental factors can result in altering the embryo's DNA, especially in the first trimester, the earliest part of development, okay? So the fetus is especially vulnerable or especially delicate, you could think of, to ex with exposure to different environmental factors, okay? So things to avoid, drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, radiation, all could be very detrimental to the development of a fetus, okay? Um, some reprotective technology that's been uh, given us real big uh, advances in the field are cloning. Uh, it is possible to actually clone a human being in theory if you take the DNA from a mother's skin cell and put it into a fertilized egg without a nucleus you could clone a human being. Uh, is it ethical? That's something we'll talk about later. Artificial insemination is fertilization without sex, okay? So injecting 
sperm cells or the DNA of sperm cells into a fertilized egg. And in vitro fertilization, which just means um, creating this natural process in the lab. So again, we talked again about fertilization, male depositing the sperm into the vagina, the sperm traveling from the testes to the urethra, and then going into the fallopian tubes where the embryo can develop in the uterus, not the vagina.